Hi everyone, and welcome back to The Giver. It's a weird book, right? <laughs> it's kind of weird. And today, we are going to continue with chapter number five. So grab your books and let's get into it and see if we can figure out just what's going on. Yeah, that's our goal. What's going on? <laughs> chapter five. Usually, at the morning ritual, when the family members told their dreams, Jonas didn't contribute much. He rarely dreamed. Sometimes he awoke with a feeling of fragments. Fragments are broken pieces. Afloat in his sleep. But he couldn't seem to grasp. Grasp means like catch, you know. Grasp them and put them together into something worthy of telling at the ritual. They use the word ritual a lot, don't they? Hmm. But this morning was different. He had dreamed very vividly. Vividly means super colorful, super real. Vividly the night before. His mind wandered while Lily, as usual, recounted a lengthy dream. This one, a frightening one, in which she had, against the rules, been riding her mother's bicycle and been caught by the security guards. That was a long sentence. Very awkward. Wow. <laughs> they all listened carefully and discussed with Lily the warning that the dream had given. Thank you for your dream, Lily, Jonas said the standard phrase automatically. Auto. We're going to drop that toe, toe. Drop it out, right? Auto, do. Make it a D. Automatically. Automatically. And tried to pay attention and tried to pay better attention while his mother told of a dream fragment. A disquieting. Disquieting means uncomfortable. Ugh. Weird, right? Something's wrong. Scene where she had been chastised. Chastised means yelled at. For a rule infraction she didn't understand. Together they agreed that it was probably... Nah. I struggle with this book. <laughs> Together, they agreed that it probably resulted from her feelings when she had reluctantly, reluctantly, means didn't want to, dealt punishment to the citizen who had broken the major rules a second time. Father said that he had had no dreams. Gabe, father asked, looking down at the basket where the new child lay gurgling <laughs> after his feeding, ready to be taken back to the nurturing center for the day. They all laughed. Uh -huh. Dream telling began with threes. If new children dreamed, no one knew. Jonas, mother asked. They always asked, though they knew how rarely Jonas had a dream to tell. I did. See that? It's italicized, right? The word is slanted. That means you emphasize it more. I did. Not I did. I did. You know? Like that. I did dream last night, Jonas told them. He shifted in his chair, frowning. Mm. Good, father said. Tell us. The details aren't clear, really, Jonas explained, trying to recreate the odd dream in his mind. I think I was in the bathing room at the house of the old. That's where you were yesterday, father pointed out. Jonas nodded. But it wasn't really the same. There was a tub in the dream, but only one. And the real bathing room has rows and rows of them. But the room in the dream was warm and damp. You know, like a sauna or something, right? Steam room. And I had taken off my tunic which is like a jacket, shirt kind of thing, but hadn't put on the smock, so my chest was bare. Oh, I was perspiring, perspiring, I means sweat, right? Because it was so warm, and Fiona was there, the way she was yesterday. Asher too, mother asked. Jonah shook his head. No, 
It was only me and Fiona, alone in the room, standing beside the tub. She was laughing, but I wasn't. I was almost a little angry at her, in the dream, because she wasn't taking me seriously. Seriously about what? Lily asked. Jonas looked at his plate. For some reason, that he didn't understand. He felt slightly embarrassed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. I think I was trying to convince her that she should get into the tub of water. Oh, I see what you're doing. <laughs> he paused. He knew he had to tell it all, that it was not only all right, but necessary to tell all of the dream. So he forced himself to relate the part that made him uneasy. Hmm, weird. I wanted her to take her clothes. What? Oh, I wanted her to take off her clothes and get into the tub, he explained quickly. <laughs> All right, let's see what's happening. I wanted to bathe her. I had the sponge in my hand, but she wouldn't. She kept laughing and saying no. He looked up at his parents. That's all, he said. Can you describe the strongest feeling in your dream, son? Father asked. Jonas thought about it. The details were murky, like dirty and hard to see. And vague means there's nothing clear about it. But the feelings were clear and flooded him again now as he thought. The wanting, he said, right? The wanting, wanting, it's italicized. I knew that she wouldn't. And I think I knew that she shouldn't. See that? I emphasized shouldn't, too. But I wanted it so terribly. I could feel the wanting all through me. Thank you for your dream, Jonas, Mother said after a moment. She glanced at Father. Lily, Father said, it's time to leave for school. Would you walk beside me this morning and keep an eye on the new child's basket? We want to be certain he doesn't wiggle himself loose. Jonas began to rise to collect his school books. He thought it surprising that they hadn't talked about his dream at length before the thank you. Perhaps they found it as confusing as he had. Wait, Jonas, Mother said gently. I'll write an apology to your instructor so that you won't have to speak one for being late. All right, something's up. He sank back down into his chair, puzzled. I'm confused, too. He waved to Father and Lily as they left the dwelling, carrying Gabe in his basket. He watched while Mother tidied the remains of the morning meal and placed the tray by the front of the door, by the front door, for the collection crew. Oh, this must be like the trash people, right? The collection crew. Finally, she sat down beside him at the table. Jonas, she said with a smile, the feeling you described as wanting it was your first stirrings. <laughs> okay. Father and I have been expecting it to happen to you. It happens to everyone. It happened to Father when he was your age. And it happened to me. It will happen someday to Lily. And very often, Mother added, it begins with a dream. Stirrings. He had heard the word before. He remembered that there was a reference, reference, reference to the stirrings in the Book of Rules, though he didn't remember what it said. And now, and then, what? Ugh. These sentence structures drive me crazy. And now and then, the str <laughs> still can't do it, wow. And now and then, the speaker mentioned it, attention a reminder that stirrings must be reported in order for treatment to take place. Treat, treatment? What? He had always ignored the announcement because he didn't understand it, and it had never seemed to apply to him in any way. He ignored, as most citizens did, many of the commands and reminders read by the speaker. Do I have to report it? He asked his mother. She laughed. You did, in the dream telling. That's enough. But what about the treatment? The speaker says that the treatment must take place. Jonas felt miserable. Miz miserable. He felt terrible, right? He felt awful. Just when the ceremony was about to happen, his ceremony of 12, would 
he have to go away somewhere for treatment just because of a stupid dream? But his mother laughed again in a reassuring, affectionate way. No, no, she said. It's just the pills. You're ready for the pills. That's all. Huh. That's the treatment for stirrings. Huh. Jonas brightened. He knew about the pills. I didn't. His parents both took them each morning. And some of his friends did. He knew. Once he had been heading off to school with Asher, both of them on their bikes, when Asher's father had called from their dwelling doorway. You forgot your pills, Asher. Asher had groaned good-naturedly, turned his bike and ridden back while Jonas waited. It was the sort of thing one didn't ask a friend about because it might have fallen into that uncomfortable category of being different. Asher took a pill each morning. Jonas did not. Always better, less rude, to talk about things that were the same. Now he swallowed the small pill that his mother handed him. That's all, he asked. That's all, she replied, returning the bottle to the cupboard. But you mustn't forget. I'll remind you for the first weeks, but then you must do it on your own. If you forget, the stirrings will come back. The dreams of stirrings will come back. Sometimes the dosage, dosage, like how much, right? How much of the medicine he gets must be adjusted. Oh, so sometimes they're stronger. <laughs> Asher takes them, Jonas confided. So Jonas said, you know, ah, Asher takes them too. His mother nodded unsurprised. Many of your groupmates probably do. The males at least. And they will, and they all will soon. Females too. How long will I have to take them? Until you enter the house of old. <laughs> what? She explained, all of your adult life. But it becomes routine. After a while, you won't even pay much attention to it. She looked at her watch. If you leave right now, you won't even be late for school. Hurry along. And thank you again, Jonas, she added as he went to the door for your dream. Pedaling rapidly down the path, Jonas felt oddly proud to have joined those who took the pills. For a moment, though, he remembered the dream again. The dream had felt pleasurable. Ooh. Though the feelings were confused, he thought that he had liked the feelings that his mother had called stirrings. <laughs> he remembered that upon waking, he had wanted to feel the stirrings again. Mm. Then, in the same way that his own dwelling slipped away behind him as he rounded the corner on his bicycle, the dream slipped away from his thoughts. Very briefly, a little guiltily, he tried to grasp it back. But... The feelings had disappeared. The stirrings were gone. Huh. I understand what's happening. But do you? <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> that chapter actually felt a little more normal. But, boy, those sentences, the way the author wrote those sentences hurts me sometimes to read. I have to read it and mess up and be like, oh, we pause here. So don't feel bad if you read it and it just seems, what? What did I just read? Like the grammar's off, but it's not. It's just a really complex sentence. So here we go. Let's take a look at our questions for chapter five, right? Remember, you can get the link for this, this uh, worksheet in the description down below the video. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at question number one. Is the morning ritual of dream telling a negative or positive experience? So this is going to be your opinion. Explain it well. Number two, what do you think the stirrings are? Mm, what do you think they are? <laughs> number three, why do you think everyone takes a pill to stop the stirrings? I wonder too, it's kind of weird. And number four, why do you think Jonas felt guilty for trying to feel the stirrings again? Hmm. Let me know, leave your answers down below and you know, write your answers on the worksheet and give it to your teacher <laughs> so they can check it. And I will see you for chapter number six because that's a weird book and I really want to make it through and figure out what's just happening here. Especially what happens to the old people. That's really weird, huh? 
Yeah, all right, I'll see you for chapter six. Goodbye.